Some ought to say there's two expressions, effects of being convicted by the word being preached. There's two. When people are convicted and you can't be converted without being convicted and there can't be no convictions without the law being preached. So the law is preached so it convicts so grace can convert. Huh? Here's the two emotions, the two effects from conviction. When people get under conviction, here's, here's what happened. They either humble themselves and repent or they stay proud in defense and they get offended. And the word offended means they fall away. That's the same. Some might say you respond to truth only two ways. And some would describe that in the category of believing and unbelieving. Well, the believer repents and the, the believer, you know, follows what he, they're told to do. The unbeliever, that's the one that gets offended. But a lot of times we find out that it's those that's confessing with their mouth that they really believe. And 32 years of preaching, I promise you, more times than I probably even know how to count that high. I have heard, and I'm not exaggerating, I have heard, Brother Marvin, whatever God gives you to preach, you can preach it to me. Preach it to me. Hello? And then when I was preaching, they were shouting, but then when God told me to tell them something. Hello? Come on. Think about it. And people, you're either going to believe and repent or you're going to not believe and become offended. And let me tell you this. You know why some people are depressed? Because they're offended at the word. Some people are trying to get delivered from depression, but it's really conviction. Amen. The Holy Spirit is convicting them of their sin and they get mad at everybody. They're mad with themselves. They're trying to live a lie. They're mad first at the preacher because they think it's his fault and he don't even know. She don't even know. She just stepped in their business, has no idea. And they walk around so offended. They never they stop going to church because they think everybody now knows about it. When the Holy Ghost convicts you like that, you think everybody knows. You think every time somebody looks at you, they're thinking about what wrong you do it. If they're talking, they can be laughing, talking with each other, and you think they're laughing at you, talking about you. Because you're under so much conviction. And you're trying to find anybody that can console you and condone it. Come on, somebody, and cancel it out. Amen. Amen. And after a while, you're under so much conviction, you come into the altar and you think you're praying, God, I'm depressed, but really you convicted. I've watched people that's come to the altar and because they would not. I told a guy one night, daughter, I said, if you repent, you'd get joy again. He looked at me and I tell he got a little matter. I said, you ain't, you ain't depressed. You've been under conviction. God been trying to tell you what you need to repent of and you don't want to repent. You want to bypass it. You want God to give you joy, but you don't want to give God your everything. And they're under conviction and they ain't got no joy and they can't get it from a song. They can't get it from prophet thinks he is and prophet wants to be. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. They can't get it from the service. They go everywhere looking for it. They think they get one of them shouting services. Uh, three weeks later, they done rolled in the altar. Amen. Ten times in the last ten nights uh, in a revival. Amen. But a week later, they still bound again. They still right back in because they, they're under conviction and they're trying to shout it off. Uh, they're trying to enjoy it off. Uh, trying to find me a soothsayer, massager that'll condone it. And convince me it's okay when the Holy Ghost is telling me you're wrong. Yeah. So they get that itchy ear hearing. And they start looking for somebody to tell them. When all along, if they just do what God said, joy from another world. 